twice now in this conversation, you said you're insecure, which is fascinating. Number one, most people I interview never say that, even though we all are. So either you're very transparent or you've mentioned that on purpose for a reason and how that drives you. Since we all have some insecurity, I'm really curious why you've mentioned that twice and how that feeds what you're doing and how you do it. I think that part of entrepreneurship is always feeling like someone is right behind you uh, trying to take your lunch, okay. right? Gotcha. And, and I feel like from the beginning of my career, um, I'm not saying it's healthy, by the way. It doesn't necessarily lead to a great, <laughs> a great lifestyle or good vacations. But, um, you know, I, we, we, for example, we have a very active uh, uh, competitor monitoring, uh, you know, uh, uh, group of people here at, at GoodRx. Um, I can remember both at Facebook and Yahoo, we were in a constant panic about who the next person was that was popping up that was going to eat our lunch. You know, you look back and you think, that company, really? That company you've never heard of? Like, you guys are worried about them? We were worried about them. We were really worried about them. Right. And I find that that if you, as long as you can channel that energy in the right direction, um, you get incredible results. It, it builds an urgency. I mean, look, I've, I've been at GoodRx eight years now. I feel more uh, a desire to move quickly than ever because the bigger we get, the more people notice, the more potential competitors, the more questions. Um, that, it, to me, that, that urgency and that insecurity build into something that makes an amazing entrepreneurial experience where you just won't quit. I love it. Well, and you said it earlier. This, I think your answer ties into what you said earlier is you don't want to get to the point where you feel you're so smart that you get disrupted. I thought that was a very insightful comment you made in passing. Don't miss what Doug said there. Um, but you know, if I can throw it, what, yeah. what, what I find interesting these days is, you know, now I, I run a company of almost 200 people. And what I'm trying to learn, to be honest, is a different skill these days, which is to realize that I don't have all the answers. Right. And, and to, I, I'm actually spending a lot of time these days keeping my mouth shut mm. because there are a lot more smarter people here than I am. And my way is not always the right way. And so I, 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 I'm actually, that's my sort of project of, the, I'd say, the last few years has to been to grow these other entrepreneurs and to let them, let them you know, pursue their urgencies and insecurities um, and uh, to sort of uh, ride that. Because otherwise, you know, I, I feel like um, it can be really hard as you transition to a bigger company to, to let go of that and let other people take on some of that burden. Well, I think that's really good. I was going to ask you, what's it, how is it different from your previous roles where you were in leadership at some big-time companies? We've already mentioned their names. Yeah. And now you're CEO or co-CEO, uh, if I've got my notes correct. How is that different as this thing grows to now you've got a very different leadership relationship with those 200 people? I think it's really hard for incredible, uh, both entrepreneurs and um, uh, talented individuals to become managers, you know? Uh, I, I, I can think of many people, including myself, who, like, I feel like I'm reasonably good at figuring out product. I'm reasonably good at figuring out human basic needs and how to channel that into an app or a website or an experience for a consumer. I think I'm an awful manager because, again, I, 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 I see my way and I, I have to do a good job of educating others so that they can either build out my vision or, frankly, go with their own. Um, and I, I see that transition being very hard. As I think through the companies I've worked at, We've had incredible solo performers that we put them in management roles and it, it doesn't work out well. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very careful of that. Um, I limit the number of people that I manage because, again, I just don't think I'm a great manager. I think my co-founder is. Um, and I prefer to focus on the product vision versus sort of the, I'll call it the, um, the politics in, of, of, of management. Um, it's something I need to work on, to be honest, because yeah. I, I, I think... I love being an entrepreneur. I struggle with managing. Well, but I think that's very liberating. It has to be liberating for you to say that because everybody else knows that. You know what I mean? Like all your team know that you're not a great manager. So I love that you uh, call that out and you're playing to your strengths. This is an age old concept. So I, I, I applaud you. And I think leaders, you need to listen in what was just said there. Hey, you got to know what you do well and surround yourself by other people who manage better. Let me ask you this. You did say something uh, a moment ago. You said you're trying to kind of listen more and keep your mouth closed. What does that look like within that context of 200 people, whether it be the small amount of people you manage, which you just mentioned, but are you getting out there intentionally amongst the other 200 and, and uh, doing a lot of listening? Um, that is a big chunk of my job today. In fact, it's funny. Um, three days a week, uh, I do what I call iced tea walks. And that's because I love iced tea and I like to walk. 
And I grab some random person at this company and we just spend a half hour talking about the industry, what they do, what I do, what we should be doing together. I share everything with everybody. And uh, sometimes I, people are like, really? Are you telling them the most sensitive company information? And I'm like, well, how do you expect them to succeed unless they know everything? So mm -hmm. for example, we have board meetings quarterly. Um, we then have, uh, right after the board meeting, we do an all hands meeting for the whole company where we walk through the entire deck that we pitched the board. And so every employee at this company knows everything that we're doing. And, you know, the other challenge that I have is I'm always trying to understand the user experience. I'm trying to understand what the average American who's coming to our product, who's struggling to afford the cost of their meds, like I need to understand that and know that. So that means I'm spending tons of time with our patient advocates. That's what we call customer mm -hmm. care here. Um, you name it. Like anybody who wanders into my office gets more than they bargain for because I'll spend three hours digging into our product and our experience and our marketing and, and how to do it better because I, I want to get that banter. I feel like also friction causes the best product, meaning I want two smart people to go at it and the best, the best answer will rise to the top.